Orla, um, Minister, this question very much follows uh, off the back of the debacle over the reappointment of Brian Kavanagh as CEO of Horse Racing Ireland. As you're aware, the position of CEO of the Irish National Stud is currently up for grabs, and I'm hoping you can assure me that the Code of Practice for Governance of State Bodies, particularly with regard to the stipulation of a single non-renewable term, will be invoked in this situation, because there's a big perception out there that there's a bit of a, a click in operation at the moment. Thank you, Deputy Arabano. I appreciate the, 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 uh, the image which you wish to portray, uh, Deputy Daly, but let me assure you that that image is far from the reality. The Irish National Stud Company Limited is a commercial state body. The appointment of a Chief Executive Officer is a matter for the Board of the Irish National Stud, subject to the consent of the relevant Ministers. I understand a recruitment competition is currently underway. The Deputy will be aware that the Board has its own obligations in relation to compliance with corporate governance standards. My Department has arrangements in place to monitor the activities of state bodies and ensure compliance with the Code of Practice for the governance of state bodies. I understand that the current CEO of the Irish National Stud has announced that he is stepping down from the position. I am aware that he has done an excellent job as CEO of the Stud, and I want to add my voices uh, to the many tributes that are rightly being paid to him. I understand that the Irish National Stud Board may request a temporary extension of the current CEO's contract to facilitate a smooth transition to a new CEO, and I am open to considering this in line with government policy and guidelines. I am sure the Deputy would wish to uh, acknowledge the CEO's contribution as well. I don't think you would know what I would or, or wouldn't like to do. Um, I think, obviously, horse racing has been called into serious disrepute over the handling of the last CEO uh, appointment, and I am uh, concerned to ensure that such a debacle would not be repeated in this instance. Now, I take heart from the fact that you have told me that the position will not be filled by the current uh, individual who has just finished his term of office. And I would remind the Minister that the reason for the Code of Practice is there is for very good reasons, and actually only a very small number of uh, CEO positions are filled beyond the five or seven year term. So if the Minister is saying that, what's, that the current um, CEO will not be taking up the new position, has not put his fo name forward for reappointment, but in order to ensure a transition, I don't know why the transition wasn't provided for, given that he would have been well aware when his contract would have been terminated. Can you assure us that that will be only for a matter of a month or two? Because anything more than that does call into question um, governance issues, as far as I'm concerned, and compliance with the Code of Practice. Thank you, Deputy. Deputy Hayden wants to make a comment, Minister, but he's entitled to make a comment. Sure. Uh, thanks, Chair. Can I, just on this question, um, I'm a bit disturbed that we have members of Parliament here asking questions based on perception of a click, I think is the phrase that was used. I think uh, we in this House have a duty to deal mo much more in reality than in perception. And on that basis, and in light of what the Minister has just said, can I just put on the record um, uh, my appreciation to the outgoing CEO for a remarkable um, contribution to the running of the National Stud. Um, you only have to look at the figures uh, in terms of tourism, in terms of the equine industry and in terms of all the overall figures as to the state that the National Stud was in when he took it over and the way in which he will leave it now. Uh, it's a credit to him and he deserves great credit for that. Thanks. And let you back in, Deputy David. Uh, can I thank um, um, Deputy Hayden for his, his comments, um, and I think he, he uh, addresses far more eloquently than I the, the track record of the, the outgoing uh, CEO. And I think it is uh, insightful to look at the state uh, of, of, of the Irish National Stud when he was appointed and its current uh, financial state. And I think that actions speak louder than words, and, and his actions have been um, a tribute to, to, to the industry. And, 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 uh, um, he leaves it in, in, in far better stead than, than he found it, and I'd like to acknowledge his, his contribution. As I said, the issue of these appointments is, a, is an issue in the first instance for the board. The CEO has indicated uh, that he does not wish uh, to apply for the position. Uh, there will be um, a recruitment campaign, um, and in order to ensure a, a smooth transition, um, we are, as I said, open to considering a, a transition period. Uh, and that will be something that will be negotiated with the board. Thank you. I don't envisage it. Very briefly, it is of course a matter for the board minister, subject to your approval. Now, I'm glad that you've said that the current outgoing CEO will not be taking up that position. The recruitment process is already well underway. The gentleman's contract has expired. 
The question I'm asking you is, how long are you prepared to extend it and when can we expect that vacancy to be filled in line with the code of practice for appointment to state bodies, which is a, a different person taking up that uh, position? Thank you very much for your cooperation, Minister. Yeah, I, I, as I said, I'm, I'm prepared to consider that. I have uh, yet to receive a formal request from, from the uh, National Study in respect of that matter. Uh, if such a request comes before uh, the Department, uh, it will be considered on its merits. Thank you. Okay, we move on to question uh, 13 in the name of Deputy Clare Daly, 30 seconds. It's a pity they hadn't contacted you before the expiry of the deadline, but again, this uh, question is in relation to uh, Horse Racing Ireland, obviously, which was. Um, the subject of a lot of attention over the debacle around the reappointment of uh, Brian Kavanagh and obviously we had the board before the Oireachtas Agricultural uh, Committee to say they made an absolute show of themselves is probably uh, a gross understatement but it was quite clear that what that board requires is strong independent intervention to have independent mm -hmm. regulation of the industry and I'm wondering why you appointed subsequent to that two people with a very developed okay. uh, connection to Coolmore onto the board rather than individuals with an okay. independent backdrop. Horse Racing Ireland is a commercial state body established under the Horse and Greyhound Racing Act 2001 and is responsible for the overall ad administration, promotion and development of the horse racing industry. I can confirm that the recent appointments to the HRI board were made in accordance with the guidelines on appointments to state boards, that they were advertised on stateboards.ie and that the appointees were considered by the Public Appointment Service to meet the detailed criteria their roles, for their roles on the board. I'm, I'm not sure if you're you know, choosing to misunderstand or that you just don't get it, but the reality is, is that there is a deep crisis within horse racing and an urgent need to have a capable, strong uh, horse racing Ireland board. Now, that, that's obvious and well known. The people you appointed happen to be people with very developed connections to Coolmore Stud. And the belief being, and not just, it's not an abstract belief, an excessive influence by big players in the market. You might like to comment on some of the crises around horse racing. For example, the whole issue of the foal levy, which is crippling small owners. There was an important court case in NACE last week where an owner who had won a case was met by uh, at the top legal establishment, if you like, under the marshal there by Horse Racing Ireland to get that decision overturned. We know, for example, that that has a big impact on small owners. You might like to comment on the fact that, uh, if you like, it is widely known that uh, foals in a major stud in Kildare are registered in the UK where the fees are less and an arrangement for a contribution is made to Horse Racing Ireland, despite the fact that under regulation in Ireland, any foals born in Ireland have to be registered in Ireland. Now, there is unhelpful and wrong practices underway, Thank and you. you need strong people on the board. Why are you putting insiders to police itself? Thank you. Minister, I know the Deputy has some form in respect of, of, of questioning the outcomes of, of, of court proceedings. Um, I, I don't propose to trespass on, on, on the findings of the courts in recent days on, on, on such matters um, other than to acknowledge the outcome of it. There is a separation of powers which the Deputy may not wish to, to recognise, but I do. Um, in respect of the Board of HRI, there are 13 members of the Board and it is representative of all of the sectoral interests. Uh, workers in the industry, race courses, trainers, owners, um, and, and in, in, in respect of the, the construct of that board, um, I think it is, it, is, it is so constructed as to give, ensure that there is an adequate voice uh, available to all of the interested parties. Um, the deputy has come in here, and I think unfairly and without substantiation, cast aspersions on the two most recent appointees to the board. Has, has, uh, you know, and the deputy, I, I think, should reflect on this. You have made scurrilous, spurious, unsubstantiated you, allegations Mr. against, against two board minute. members that were appointed. And I, okay. I, I don't Thank intend you. to dignify those, other than to say that the appointees Thank were you, made Mr. in accordance with the Public Appointment Service. Thank you. Mr. And in, Just, in accordance with okay. the criteria which were laid Thank down you, in I must that. Ask you, I must ask. Can I just say to all members, 
We are in a very privileged position here that could come in and ask very serious questions. That's their job. But we need all to be careful about mentioning any names or making allegations within the House. And you know, I'm always very hesitant to stop people putting their point of view, but we also must respect other people uh, in terms of who are not here to, to stand up for themselves. Deputy, you have one final moment. There were absolutely no points made whatsoever against the individuals personally. What I was putting to you as the Minister who appointed them is that there is a requirement on you to secure independent oversight of an industry which is self-regulatory, in fact is non-regulatory. And I didn't pass any judgment on the court case, but for you as the Minister for Agriculture, not to have a problem with the situation of a full levy where small owners have to pay a levy to Horse Racing Ireland of 3% based not on the fee that they paid, but on the advertised fee, which means that small people are being fleeced for the enrichment of Horse Racing Ireland, while the big boys who dominate the Horse Racing Ireland board and now actually do it in even greater numbers don't, are not affected by that because the ceiling is set at €30,000. Euros. And if you as the Minister you, think that everything is great inside the industry, well, I put it to you that you're about the only one in the country who does. Thanks for your cooperation and time. Minister, one final moment. As I mentioned uh, to the Deputy, but she chose to ignore, uh, th there is uh, you know, an insignificant fact of the outcome of a court finding in respect to this matter. A court finding uh, last week in respect to this matter. Um, and okay. Can I just say, in respect of, of, of the appointees, um, there was a clear skill set requirement that was communicated uh, as, as, uh, to the public appointment service as the appropriate people that were required in respect of the industry. And I am absolutely satisfied that the people that were appointed are more than well qualified to bring a unique set of skills in respect to corporate governance. Um, and, and, and other uh, in, the, in the area of um, corporate affairs, uh, human HR experience, etc., uh, which will be a very valuable skill set to the board, of which you have been critical in the past uh, of, of not having sufficient knowledge Thank in the area of corporate governance. Thank you very much. Now